Captain Brian Udall of the US Air Force is unique. He survived ejection at over the speed of sound. He lived, but only just. People don't understand what wind does to someone at that speed. You stick your hand as you're driving down the highway, stick it out the car window, and it'll blow it back. And that's at 60 miles an hour. Uh, imagine doing 800 miles an hour and what that will do. It starts ripping you apart. April 18th, 1989, and Udall and his weapons officer, Captain Dennis White, were assigned to fly their two-seat F-15 on a combat training mission. They were joined by another F-15 and took off from Seymour Johnson Air Force Base in North Carolina. They both flew out over the Atlantic Ocean and began an exercise, chasing each other around in tighter and tighter circles. My goal was just to do a, a nice 360 degree round the circle turn. About to get about 90 degrees through the turn, we started hearing wind rushing over the canopy. And uh, it was like, what's going on? We were going up over 600 knots at this point, right at the verge of supersonic. In a split second, Udall realized he was losing control of his F-15. I didn't know if I was upside down or right side up. I had no way of telling where the nearest horizon was. From 17,000 feet to 10,000 feet went by in about five seconds. When I saw 10,000 feet go by, and we're now supersonic, coming up on 800 miles an hour, uh, I commanded a bailout. Udall and his navigator pulled the handles of their ejection seats, not knowing if they'd hit the water before their chutes opened. I got a body position, pulled the handles, and in that length of time, another 4,000 feet went by. I left the cockpit at 3,000 feet, and I got my parachute at less than 1,000 feet. Had I waited even a half a second longer to pull the ejection handles, I would have hit the water still in my seat. It felt like somebody had just hit me with a train. When I went out into the windstream, it ripped my helmet right off of my head, broke all the blood vessels in my head and face. My head was swollen the size of a basketball, and my lips were the size of cucumbers. My left elbow was dislocated and pointed backwards. The only thing holding my leg on was an artery, the vein, the nerve, and the skin. And my left leg snapped at the bottom half. I found myself uh, exhausted, hanging in a parachute. I could feel the, the cool night air on my face. I could hear the parachute ruffling above me. When pilots eject, their seats automatically deploy a one-man life raft, just in case, like Udall, they eject over water. I had just grabbed a hold of the life raft. I hit the water. I went to kick my legs to try to get in. Well, when I went to kick my legs, the bottom half of my legs were just flopping. This arm's bent backwards, my legs are flopping, and I've got one arm that I'm holding onto this life raft with. And I thought, you know, I'm gonna die out here tonight. The first indication of death came in my mind. I said, so this is what it's like to die. And, and then I thought, you know, I said, I can't die tonight. And I said, I got, a, I got a wife and a baby I need to see before. And if I don't get in this raft, I'm not gonna make it. He knows that he has only minutes to climb into his life raft before the freezing ocean kills him. I stopped everything, I started praying, saying, God, I need some help. I tried one more time to get in the raft just by using my one arm without kicking my legs, and I managed to get right in. It took seconds for Udall to eject and hit the water, but it took four long hours for the first search and rescue planes to find him. At this point, I'm thinking I'm going home, so I can deal with whatever pain that I have to deal with because I know I'm going home. Up until now, he'd only been concerned with his own survival. When he finally reached hospital, his thoughts turned to his navigator. The next day, around noon, they came in and they told me that they had found his body, that uh, he had uh, been killed instantly upon ejection. Uh, and that was a tough thing. When you make that decision to eject, you're doing it to try to save your life. And when one guy doesn't make it, it's, it's pretty tough.